Not having stayed at home for a week, Lemuel Gulliver set off on another trip on the ship Good Hope. But after a few days the ship was overtaken by the pirates. Oh, no. They hijacked the ship and tied up the entire crew. Oh, no. Gulliver tried to escape, so as punishment, the pirates dropped him in a boat to the will of the waves and winds. Oh, no. For a long time Gulliver circled the open ocean until he noticed land on the horizon. He swam to the shore and began to survey the land. What? Suddenly a huge shadow oh, covered no. the sun. Raising his head, the astonished Gulliver saw a large island soaring in the sky. Exhausted by hunger and thirst, Gulliver began to scream, waving his hat, hoping that the inhabitants of the island would notice him. Then the natives took pity on Gulliver and lowered the stairs so that he could climb the island. When Gulliver climbed the stairs, he found a crowd of very strange locals in front of him. Their heads were tilted to the right or left, with one eye looking inward and the other upward. And at each noble person there was a servant who patted the owner on the lips or ears, distracting him from his thoughts. Gulliver received a warm welcome. Nice. He was fed in the palace and even had a tour of the island. So, Gulliver realized that the earth soars in the sky due to a huge magnet, and at the base there is a giant diamond. <laughs> okay. But life in the flying kingdom was boring, so Gulliver soon returned to Earth. Before his eyes was a devastated country where local residents, dressed in rags, were starving. As it turned oh, no. out, these people did everything in their lives the other way around. They built a house starting from the roof. Oh, no. They tried to get the sun's rays from cucumbers. What? And the artists were blindly mixing oh, paint no. for paintings. Local scientists did not understand why words are needed in a language. After all, to everyone who began to argue, they simply cut out the brains and swapped them. Gulliver's surprise knew no bounds, and he hastened to leave the island. Going to neighboring lands, Gulliver found himself in the kingdom of darkness and gloom. Trembling with fear, he continued his journey. Suddenly a ghost appeared from the darkness. In fright, Gulliver tried to hide, oh, no. but the spirit noticed him. He beckoned the traveler with a gesture, and Gulliver had no choice oh, no. but to follow the ghost. Very soon they reached a large castle, and Gulliver was invited to a reception with the king. Walking through the castle, Gulliver saw hundreds of ghosts who cooked dinner, cleaned and guarded the chambers. It turned out that this country is ruled by a powerful sorcerer who can raise the dead and all the living dead serve him. What? The wizard received <laughs> Gulliver with honors. And to entertain such a rare guest, he began to revive anyone whom Gulliver asked. They were great warriors, sages, and even primitive people. But tired of wandering, Gulliver thanked <laughs> okay. the wizard and soon left the kingdom of darkness. He went to the nearest port, where he hoped to board a ship bound for England. Walking around the port, Gulliver immediately attracted attention. A foreigner in such places was a rarity, and therefore Gulliver oh, was mistaken no. for a spy, seized and urgently taken to the local ruler. The foreigner was immediately found guilty. And as punishment, Gulliver had to crawl across the throne room on his stomach, licking the floor in his path. This was the custom. At the end, Gulliver bowed to the monarch seven times, hitting his head on the floor. Then the governor looked thoughtfully at Gulliver, and then nice. pardoned him. Miraculously freed Gulliver ran out of the castle, and went to the nearest port, where he boarded an English ship. I must say that Gulliver never returned to these parts. 